Hey guys, how's it going? So this is going to be the first Python tutorial that we're going to do. And we're going to really start off with some of the basics. So in this tutorial, I want to help you accomplish the following. I'm going to explain to you what commenting is. We're going to go over single commenting, multi-line commenting, and just some shortcuts you can use in Python, which make things uh, convenient when you need to put in some. And we're going to go over three major data types, which uh, I will be walking you through as well. And then we're going to go through print statements right here. Um, I'm going to walk you through what a regular print statement is and then a formatted print statement. I'm going to give you a very high level introduction to variables. Now variables is one of those topics that needs its own tutorial and we will, we will go over that in a little bit more detail later on. And then we're going to print the data and we're going to print it in a few different ways. And at the end, the exercise that I want us to come uh, out with is I want us to be able to write, hello world, my name is, and you're going to write your name here and my favorite color is blue. And we're gonna try it out, making sure that we set hello world, your name, and your favorite color to some kind of a variable. So, let's get started. Whenever you're writing some kind of a code, a comment is something that you would put in so that it's a reminder for you to tell you what that code is doing, or you wanna comment out certain things because you wanna test out code without executing that specific command. And uh, it becomes very helpful. So in order to comment, what you would want to do is there's three different ways to do it. The first one is to do a single line comment, which is just put a hashtag in front of something. And then you can write, this will not execute. And so what really this line is doing is it's saying, we have a string here called this will not execute. If I don't have a comment, you notice that it becomes part of the code. And if I try to run this, it's actually going to give me an, an error. It's going to say, well, what are you talking about? What does this even mean? But the minute you put a comment in front of it and you try to rerun that code again, it's actually going to say, all right, you know what? There's nothing to execute because you don't have any text in there whatsoever. So to use a comment, what you would do is, let's say I'm going to write a function um, or I'm going to write something like, uh, you know, my name is Sats. And I want it to print. And I can put a comment above that and say, this is where you would define what you want to print. So all this is, is it's a description of what I want to execute. That's an example of why you'd want to use comments, basically anything that you don't want to execute. So if you notice, all this stuff here is written, but it's not executed. And that's because I have a multi-line comment in place. And that is just using three single quotes in front and before everything else. So you go single quote, and you notice how it actually just doubles up there. You hit enter, and then you can say whatever you want. Here. And really the purpose of a multi-line comment is something like how I have here and that is I have a whole bunch of uh, instructions in, in the format of somewhat of a syllabus here that I want to present that I want to remind myself in terms of what to talk about but I don't need it to execute within the code. And then there's a shortcut and I actually use this shortcut quite a bit. So let's say I have something like print and I'm just gonna I'll explain how to use the print statement in a second. My name is Sats and then I can say something like print hello world and now when I actually hit the execution of this something went wrong oh because it's not called o print or o rent it's called print so when I actually write print you notice what it's going to do it's going to execute both of these lines but let's just say for some reason I'm testing out my code and I don't want these two lines to print I could go ahead and put a hashtag in front of everything that that you know if you have 15 16 lines that could get kind of time consuming I could put single quotes in front. I mean, that's a solution, but you know, then you gotta pretty much copy paste, delete and all that stuff. So I mean, this could work as well. Or there's an actual command. Now this command works on the Mac. I'm not entirely sure what the command is on Windows, but a quick Google could probably tell you. You just highlight what you don't want and you hit command forward slash. And what that does is it inserts two single line hashtags in front so it comments it out. And now when you want to use this code, you just hit the same thing again, command forward slash. And now the code is back. Okay, so that will give you a slight understanding of what commenting is. The reason why I wanted to cover off commenting first is because I will be using comments down as we go along this and I didn't want you wondering what, what the hashtag or what the um, you know the single quotes was all about. So I just wanted to give you that uh, knowledge up front. So the next thing we're going to talk about now is data types. Now, I'm going to use a comment. Now, when we talk about data types, 
There's really three types of major or main data types that we would use in Python. And those include three different types of data types. One is a string. And a string is basically anything that you want to execute within the brackets. So it's going to print word for word. So I can say, you know, string is equal to my name is Sats. And so if I print out the word string, the variable string, which I'll, t which I'll touch on in a second as well, it'll actually just execute this, my name is Sats. The other way to do it is I can just write, copy and paste this, put it within the print statements, make sure you have the single quotes on each side, and it executes as well. So this is actually a good example of Now this is my intro to variables at a very high level. This is a good example of variables. And what happens in this case is I've actually taken this command, my name is Sats, and I'm storing it in this variable called string. And so anytime that I reference this variable string, it's actually going to print out my name is Sats. So when you think of a variable, for the context of this, just think of a variable as a label or a representation of whatever is happening here. And now this could be something like a string like we've typed out here. It could be an expression, like some kind of a mathematical expression, which we'll cover off in another topic. But for the, for the purpose of this, just understand that a variable is just a label for what you want to print out or what you want to see on the other side. The other type of variable that we have is an integer. An integer is actually very commonly used as well. So for the most part, an integer is just a whole number, right? So if I put a comment here and I just say this is any whole number. And then the last one is a float. And a float is essentially anything that has a decimal right after it. And these are the three most common ones that I've actually used. I mean, there's many other data types as well that we can cover off later on. But for now, float is a decimal number. And this is also another good example of commenting. As you're learning, you can write little comments for yourself here. The code will not execute it, but it's good for you to remember you know, what you've done here. But again, here's an example of a whole number four, which I've allocated to a variable called int. So below what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna print all three of these and we should see the representation or whatever these labels are associated to. So 4.5, again, is associated with the word float. Now let me give you another tip on variable assignment. There are reserved words in Python, string being one of them, int being one of them, and float being one of them. That's why you see these little squiggly lines under it. And so you probably want to call your variable something else to be on the safe side. So I mean, let's do the same thing here. We'll just call this string underscore name. We'll call this int underscore number, and we'll call this float underscore Let's just call it decimal or something like that. Because what you'll notice is when we get into functions, we'll talk about int being its own function and you can pass in an argument in there, but we'll get to that later on. I have three different data types here. I have a string, I have an integer, and I have a decimal place. So that will cover the basics of when it comes to data types. Now I wanna talk a little bit more about the print statement. Now, what if I said to you that I actually wanted to print my name is Sats, I am four years old. In a few months, I'm gonna be 4.5 years old. So there's a few ways to do it. I can do something called hard coding, and that is just print word for word. My name is Sats. Today, I am four years old. In a few months, I will, sorry guys, will be 4.5 years old. So now when you look at this, I can actually just print this and it's going to say my name is Sats, today I'm four years old, in a few months I will be 4.5 years old. Now that is what I want to print here, but this time I want to print the exact same thing, but I want to use variables. So we're going to do this a few different ways. I'm going to show you how to use a few different types of print statements. So we're going to go over the regular print statement and the formatted print statement. And these are the two basic ways and 99% of the times how you're going to print things in Python. So we already have my name is Sats associated as a variable string name, right? So this is already defined up here under the, under the variable string name. We have the number four right here, which is defined as int number. And then we have 4.5 as a float defined as float decimal. So we're gonna try putting in some of these variables to print this statement. So in order to print something in Python, you would write print. You would call the actual variable name. So let's just call string name and let's just print it for fun. What it's actually gonna print, my name is Sats. 
So what it's done is it's taken whatever was passed into this variable, which is my name is Sats, and printed it there. It's the same thing as taking this and putting it there because the two are equal to each other. In Python, we also want to make sure that we can mix a variable with some text as well, or with a string, or with something that's within quotes. So because I don't have today I am anywhere defined as a variable, I actually need to type it in. So when you do the regular way of the regular print expression or regular print statement, what you would do is you say I want to print my string name plus I want to print some kind of a string as well. So in here you would write today I am and now because I want to introduce another variable plus int number plus and this can get a little cumbersome which is why I like the print the format of print statement a little bit better. We'll talk about that in a second. And so you always want to keep opening these quotes because it's going to print the variable name. Then it's going to do something called concatenate. Concatenate basically means it's going to add on whatever you've done as a plus. So if I say Bob plus today I am, it's going to write Bob today I am. And you also want to have the space right after this as well so that it actually leaves a space between whatever you've printed here. In this case, my name is Sats and today. And we probably want to add a period as well because that's what I have up here. So it's going to write, today my name is Sats, period, today I am four, it's passing on four, plus, we're going to say years old, in a few months I will be, what do you think we're going to do here? We're going to add another plus because we're adding in a string, float, decimal, plus, and we're going to finish the string off by saying years old, print, and sometimes, you know what, you're going to hit an error, and as you hit an error, all you have to do is go back and say, did I have, do I have all of my string assignments done properly here? And what does it say? It says, can only concatenate string, not integer to string. Okay, when you're gonna do a print statement, a print statement is generally written as a string. Even when you pass in some kind of a variable, unless you actually tell it that I want it to print an integer, it's gonna print out as a string. And what the print statement doesn't like is when you add a string and when you add an integer. So because these are two different data types, it's saying, what am I doing? I, this is a string, this is a string, then you're introducing a number out of nowhere. Now I've got a string and now I've got a number. What we're gonna do is we're gonna say, as we import these variables in here, we're gonna convert them to strings along the way. So you're gonna write str. And what this is now saying is that when I'm printing this for, instead of printing it as an integer, I'm gonna convert it into a string so that it actually mixes with the rest of the sentence here as well. So let's see if I add in string in front of here. And we'll go over these functions right now. This is just more to talk to you about the print statement, but we're going to go in a little bit more depth on, you know, the string, the integer, and all that other stuff as well. So now we got it working. My name is Sats. Today I am. So we forgot a space. And again, this is where you have to go back and always debug your code to make sure things are working. Today I am. Space is supposed to be over here. Let's try that again. Today I'm four years old, in a few months I will be 4.5 years old. Okay, so you saw that this is kind of an interesting way to write the print statement. And I generally don't like using this method. And that's just because there's so much conversion that has to happen along the way. There's so many things that you have to, all these pluses, you have to all the, write all these concatenation statements and it just becomes a lot to do. So I like to use something called the formatted print statement, which is so much more cleaner. And the formatted print statement is very simple. You write print. And what you're going to do is everything that you're going to write or print is going to be within these quotes, including your variables and all your sentences. But you want to tell Python that, listen, I want to format this. So you take care of all the conversions from strings to integers and all that stuff for me. This is all going to be one big string. So you're going to put an F in front of your print statement. And that just basically tells Python this is now called, this is now what we call a formatted print statement. So you're going to say, whenever you pass in a variable to a formatted print statement, you're going to use these curly braces. So you're going to go like this. You're going to say string underscore name. So it's going to say, my name is Sats, period. Today I am int number four years old in a few months I will be float decimal years old. That's it. So let's print this out and see what happens. Look at that. So you printed that entire statement that you printed up here, or sorry, that you printed right here. It printed it word for word. I didn't have to worry about converting strings to integers and all that other kind of stuff. The formatted print statement will just take everything and put it out as a string for you. 
And that's why I love using the formatted print statement so much. Now, the other thing that I wanna cover off is when we're talking about those three different types of data types, I wanna know what kind of data type is actually being stored in that variable. So here's what I mean by that. First inclination would tell you that the string name is gonna carry, my name is Sats, it's a string. So it should say that this variable is of a type string. That means that it is a string variable. This one, because it's just a number and it's got no you know, um, single quotes in front of it or after it, or any double quotes or anything for that matter, it's just an integer. So it should in theory print out, this is of a type int. And same with this, this is of a type float. So how do you find that out? It's actually pretty simple. So let's just say that I wanna find out the type for string name. I just write an inbuilt function. So there's already an inbuilt function called type. And then you write string name and you hit print. And that's gonna tell you that this is what they call the class string. So it is actually a type string. Now what if I wanted to do the same thing with int number and int float? So let's copy this down twice and let's see what it tells you. So this is gonna be int number and then float decimal. So technically what I should see is class string for the first one. Then I should see class int for int number. And then I should see class float for float decimal. So let's run the statement. So you see that it's actually showing a string, an integer, and a float. And you can call this anything you want. You know, I can call this Bob for all that, for anything, right? I mean, it's not because we have it tagged with the word float. It has nothing to do with that. It's because it's reading. Oh, and because I don't have, uh, let's convert all this to Bob. I'm gonna show you actually a cool way how you convert a variable name in PyCharm without having to do a lot. But you know, now it's called Bob and now it's float. So this is actually a good time to introduce. So let's say I wanted to, I have this variable called Bob everywhere. Like you just saw, I had to go and manually change all of those. You can actually right click on this. You can go to refactor, rename. And now I can just call this, what do we have this float underscore decimal. And it refactors and it converts everything for you. So that's just a cool tip in, in PyCharm that's really convenient to use. And then the last thing is, let's just say for the print statement, I wanted to just say name. I wanna print out something like name, and then it's gonna say, my name is Sat. Just something very simple like that. How do I print that without having to do this stuff? Uh, you know, all this print statements. I mean, I can use any one of these methods, but there's another way to do this. If you just wanna store or print out a name or a, or a label with the actual variable, you just write print, name, so that's what I wanna have in front, and then comma, and then I can say string name. And now this is gonna print name, my name is Sats. So let's run that, and right there it's gonna say name, my name is Sats. So this was just an introduction to print statements and to help you understand a little bit more about why we use comments, how we use comments, how to print, you know, introduce you to some of the inbuilt functions. So I want you to do an exercise for me. And the exercise is, I want you to write down this. So let's get rid of all of this stuff here. All right, we don't need this anymore. So I'm gonna get rid of all of this. And what I want what I want to do is I wanna focus on making this. And I don't, it doesn't matter what type of, what type of a print statement you, you wanna use. You can use formatted, you can use regular, you can use whatever you want. But what I want you to do is go ahead and see if you can output this and then post your results in the comments below. And as long as you got that, then it's a two thumbs up. If you found this content helpful, please consider subscribing and liking this as well. And let's get on to the next video.